Hi, we're here today with Dr. Kina Martinez. She is medical director for Beacon Medical Group in Bremen. We're here today to talk about why and how to wear your mask. When the pandemic started, Dr. Martinez, it seemed like there were conflicting recommendations about wearing masks to prevent the spread of COVID. Now though, everybody seems to be either recommending them or requiring them. What changed? So Heidi, one of the things that changed is we now know for sure how COVID-19 is spread. Back in February and March, where we were first starting to be aware of this illness and what it was doing and the concerns related to it, we weren't sure how it spread from one person to another. And expert agencies were appropriately cautious about recommending actions or behaviors if we didn't know they were really going to work or be effective. But in the middle of June, June, we really had this pretty well firmed up that COVID-19 is spread through droplet transmission. And what that means is that as people talk or even just breathe, little droplets of water come out of our mouth because the inside of us is humid and moist. And virus will travel along inside of those droplets. And if someone else breathes them in or it gets in their eyes or nose, that's how the virus travels from one person to another and makes someone sick. Once we knew that this was how COVID-19 was spread, we also knew what very effective tried and true methods for preventing the spread would be, and that includes things like masks. So how do masks actually help decrease the spread of COVID? So masks work in two different ways. The first way they work is they help catch those droplets from people who are breathing them out. We call this source control. And this is exactly what the team in an operating, do, operating room does when they put masks on before and during your entire operation or surgery. They're making sure that anything that they are breathing out in their mouth doesn't get onto you while they're operating on you. And that helps make our surgery safe. We have also used masks for source control in our offices. So if someone comes in with a fever or a cough, especially during flu season, we have long recommended or asked those people to put masks on because we know that it will help reduce the spread of infectious droplets in the air, in the office, in the exam room where they're seated. And that will help protect not just our healthcare workers, but other patients who may move into that space later in the day. So that's the first type of way that masks help. They help with source control or keeping the infection from a sick person from spreading to someone who is well. The other way they help is by keeping a well person from breathing in any particles that happen to escape the mask that a sick person is hopefully wearing. So we use that and is personal protection. So when we talk about PPE or personal protective equipment, that is why your healthy healthcare workers and healthy people in grocery stores or out in the community should also wear masks because it helps to protect you as an individual at the same time that it helps protect others if you happen to be sick and don't know it. So what you're saying is masks help both healthy people and people who are sick. Correct. So masks help with your sick, they help if you're healthy, and they help if you happen to be carrying COVID-19, you don't know it because you're one of those people who doesn't get any severe symptoms. So the more everyone wears their masks, the more we help protect protect our ch each other and ourselves from becoming sick from this illness. Okay, now since the start of the pandemic too, we've seen studies that have shown that masks uh, are our best defense against COVID too, right? Yes, there have been multiple studies. And again, it's important to remember that using masks and droplet transmission of diseases that are transmitted this way is not a new thing in medicine. We have been doing this for almost 100 years. Ever since we knew about germs and, and how they carry diseases and cause diseases, masks have been a tried and proven method of preventing the spread of infections that are transmitted through droplets. So we know this about droplet transmission, and now we have even more specific studies for COVID-19 
um, including studies of different cities that have instituted mask requirements versus those who didn't, other um, incidences in the real world where we can show that masks work, not just in a theoretical situation or in a lab, but in real life to prevent this particular disease from spreading. So this might sound like a basic question, but what is the right way to wear a mask? So it's important that you get a mask that fits well, that's part of it, um, but we do know that some masks work better than others. And again, there have been studies now over the last couple of months that have come out showing that a mask that covers the nose and chin, so we want it to fully cover the nose and mouth at all times, it should fit well against the face, it shouldn't gap on the sides or what I see a lot, one that's a little too big and slides off the nose, um, so it has to fit. And the tighter it fits to the face, the more effective it's going to be at preventing COVID-19 from spreading because it will catch those droplets that are breathed out. The neck gaiters, so the one that's kind of like a big scarf that comes up over the face, um, there's some conflicting information about whether that's helpful or not. It doesn't seem to catch as many droplets um, and it might allow more to escape, but the thought is it's probably better than nothing. Um, a bandana doesn't work very well at all because it's too loose at the bottom and too many droplets can escape underneath and not get caught in the fabric, with it, which is what we really need. So having a mask that fits well, and it doesn't matter what shape it is, whether it's a rectangle one with pleated sides or one of the cutout ones that kind of shapes to your face and nose better, um, just remember the pointy end goes over the nose and not under the chin. I do see a lot of people wear them upside down, and when you do that, it's going to slide off your face, which is going to make it more uncomfortable for you. You're going to be touching it a lot more, and so turn it around, tighten up the ear loops, get one of those little um, hook things that goes across the back of your neck to tie the strings on so that it fits well because a mask that fits well works well and it will be far more comfortable you to stay in all day while you're working or going about your daily routine. I have to admit I've had mine on upside down a few times. <laughs> um, I think so we all have. With <laughs> probably. So what sort of material is the best for masks? So it appears that the, the cotton material that's two layers is really probably the best. Some of the synthetics that are a little bit thinner may not actually catch enough droplets, which is why those neck gaiters are a little bit questionable or even a bandana material. But we also don't want it to be too thick. So we as humans, sometimes if a little's more, a lot is better, and that's not always true. And in this case, it isn't true either. So a mask that is too thick will not allow you to breathe through it, which means you're just going to force the air to escape around the gaps under your chin or up in your face. Now, if you wear glasses like me, not only will that fog your glasses a lot more, it will also release more viral particles and droplets into the air. So you really want to be able to breathe through the mask and not just around it. And you want, when you take a breath in, for it to pull air through the fabric. So a good test is just to put your hand in front of your face with the mask on and breathe out. And if you can feel a little warm breath touching your skin, it's probably the right thickness. If you can't feel anything and it seems to come out under your eyes and under your chin, then that material is probably too tightly woven and you need something with fewer layers or that's thinner and allows you to breathe a little bit better through it. That's some great advice. So how about the masks with the valves on the front? Do those work? So the masks with the valves on the front are um, really designed to be comfortable for the wearer. The problem is they only provide the PPE type of protection. So they protect the person wearing them, but they do not provide source control. So similar to a mask that doesn't fit well at all, or that has big gaps in the fabric or is too loose, that type of mask is gonna allow someone who might be sick with COVID or is sick with COVID to put all kinds of viral particles into the air. So it protects you, but it does 
doesn't protect anyone around you. So those really are not adequate. I have seen people wear them with another surgical mask over top. And if that gives you the most comfortable fit, that's okay. But the mask, the valve part of it, the little button looking thing on the front, often on one side, really needs to be covered with something else that will help filter the air. Okay, and every once in a while I see people out with face shields. How about those and how do those work? So face shields are an important part of healthcare workers' personal protective equipment or our PPE because getting virus droplets into your eyes is another way that you get sick. But a face shield by itself will not keep your own viral particles from getting into the air and it won't filter out any viral particles in the air around you. It's just too easy for that air to go around the face shield or under the face shield and either get you sick or get someone around you sick. So a face shield with a mask is great protection, but a face shield by itself is really not helping you or anyone else that you're with. Okay, so students are going to be heading back to school here shortly, um, many will, and you know, is it really healthy for them to have masks on for hours at a time because they're going to be required to do so? Yeah, so that's a great question. Obviously, there's been some concern about oxygen levels or other things related to keeping a mask on. And as I said before, healthcare workers have used masks for decades, nearly 100 years, and we keep them on all day long, sometimes in very um, difficult situations like an operating room where you really have to be focused and paying attention to things. And there really are no harmful effects from wearing a mask. They are perfect safe. There's no short-term effects or long-term effects. There's really no harm at all, which is a great thing that we have something in medicine that's very effective, not harmful, perfectly safe, and provides protection for you and the people around you. It's really a great low-tech, highly effective solution that's cheap. And really, if we were looking for what's the best way to prevent a pandemic from spreading, I don't think we could invent something that would be as effective and as affordable and universally available as a good mask. Is there anybody at all who should not be wearing a mask? So we do recommend that children under the age of two or anyone who is unable to remove a mask on their own not have a mask placed on them. Um, if somebody can't remove a mask and they do have trouble breathing, we may not know about it or other people may not be able to help them. So to wear a mask, you really need to be able to take it off on your own and aware enough about how you're feeling to ask for help or get help if you're having a problem for some reason. Anything else you want to add about masks, the reason to wear them, or why, I mean really, why it is so important? So I, I think the science really speaks for itself. And again, I think after being locked down, all of us are really eager to get out to our normal lives. And I do see some people that are still taking some precautions that they wouldn't need to take anymore, being really concerned about wiping things down. And that's helpful. But what we really need to do is wear the masks. And if we wear the masks regularly and we wear them well and they fit right, then we can get back to our normal lives much more quickly and we can enjoy all the things that we've been missing for the last several months if we can just keep our masks on and protect ourselves and each other. Dr. Martinez, thank you so much. Thank you, Heidi.